Hey everyone, today we are going to take a look at the 01 autocoder, which can iteratively code uh, applications. Let's take a look at what I was able to build with it. It is actually currently working on a video editor, full stack fast API video editor. Uh, while it's working, we will, it's currently on iteration three. We'll take a look at the tower defense game that it was able to build. This was a power defense game it was able to build. And I need to run iteration for. And we can place basic towers. It has a countdown till the next wave. We can build sniper towers. And we can actually upgrade these. Uh, for example, if I click this, upgrade cost is a little bit over there, but I can actually upgrade this. Now it's firing faster. Uh, there's many. Uh, power, uh, tower types, and you can also upgrade towers. This is really, uh, it also displays information here. You can place more towers here if you want it and upgrade them. So this is pretty, and the most remarkable thing about it is, if you look at it, uh, this is the version I'm running. It is actually 1200 lines of code. It went through 15 iterations. This is the first iteration which was only, uh, actually the initial iteration was only uh, 257 lines of code, but the autocoder iterated on it. Now, let me show you a personal management and calendar. It was able to build 2000 lines of code and it works. And this is what it looks like. You can add notes, save, give it a title. These notes are saved in the note.json can actually create actual uh, tasks for particular days here. On day two, there's a test. I can delete this task, add additional tasks. Here is an entire calendar. You can change the theme. Let's change it to dark light mode. It's remarkable. The fact that you can actually change font size even. I don't know if that took effect, but this is incredible. By the way, uh, the code files for the iterative autocoder is available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. I have both the OpenAI version and the Open Router version because OpenAI requires you to be a tier five API user. But if you have Open Router access key, you can use the Open Router version of the autocoder. And we are actually on the fourth iteration of the video editor. Let's see how this is working. Let's open the file. Oh, it added quite a lot of controls. We can trim it for, let's say, five seconds. We can enter an overlay text. That's right, echo hive, position it in the center. You can add a watermark. It's incredible brightness, maybe increased brightness, rotation, mute audio, process the video. And it puts it right here after processing. So this is actually still being built. As you can see, we are on iteration number four. We gotta take a look at the code, of course, here shortly, but let's see if this actually worked. It's maybe still processing or something, or maybe it had some issues. But this is this is a full-blown video editor that it's building. Uh, I guess its controls are not perfect. You can even select different output formats. This is incredible though. Uh, and it's currently at 679 lines of code. So while this is ongoing, I suppose, let me close out of this. And I have a simple autocoder, which just simply asks you for a task and writes it to a Python file. It also prints the token usage. Here we can see that, for example, the latest iteration completion tokens were 7,400. Prompt tokens were 6,600. Reasoning tokens were 7,700. And total tokens usage was 1,400. Currently, let's see what we are using. Uh, iterative autocoder. This is the one we are using right now. We are using all one preview, but you can also use all one mini. So the open router version and the autocoder version, open AI version are pretty much the same, except open router doesn't print the uh, usage information because that's just not available. So here's the fifth iteration completed, and we are at 675 lines of code. So we're going to let this go, and in the meantime, take a look at the code, see how it works. 
By the way, if you're enjoying my content, consider becoming a patron, then you'll have access to the project files for every one of my projects. And if you want to learn how to code fast with Cursor, which is the best IDE currently, I have an entire course with 17 chapters. You can actually watch the first chapter, Cursor Deep Dive for free, and preview the first two minutes of all 17 chapters. The link will be in the description for that. I highly recommend this. By the way, let's come back to the code. So we are doing all our imports. I will try to, I will create a requirements.txt file for this. There's also a readme if you want to uh, read about it. There's also the code is heavily commented. This is for Windows specific keyboard inputs. We set the number of iterations right here, initialize OpenAI client and choose the model. And now here we have a function to run the code with code with timeout because this has automatic error correction. It's just going to create a temp file, run it with sub process uh, using threading and the timeout goes into the join part. And if the thread is alive after the code execution timed out, we kill it automatically. And I just returns the target. And here we have a function to improve the code iteratively, which is going to take an initial code with the iterator number and the user task. It's going to print that we are starting code improvement process. It checks for responses folder, it creates it. If it doesn't exist, as we can see, we are writing the responses to inside the responses folder. By the way, our sixth iteration is complete. We are up to 700 lines of code. Here in a moment, we'll test all this. Uh, iterative, let's go back. So we enter the iteration loop. Uh, this is just a function, uh, just remember, because uh, the main stuff is going to be running through the main loop, the, the main program execution, which is pretty much going to print a welcome message, taking a user input for a task, such as create a fully functional tower defense game in Pygame without using any external files. And we add an additional uh, description here. Please think long and carefully about all the features that are necessary. Implement them all without mistakes. Think care, think careful to avoid any errors. Then here we make sure the folder exists. I'm kind of I skip to the end of the code because then as we run it run into the functions, we go back up and check it. And then we get an initial response using the model, using the input that we have specified. We extract the code. Then, because it's going to return code between triple triple backticks Python, it's also going to return some text, and we actually extract that and write it as the same file name into a text file. If you want to read the improvements that it explains it has made, so and then we create an initial file name by the file name by the first twenty characters of the user task, and then we uh, save the code. And now we get the uh, initial and the, the code text, sorry, the text that is non-code. And now we also write it to a, a TXT file and then we print the usage tokens. And then at this point, uh, we can take user input actually, because after every iteration, it waits for three seconds to and asks user if you, if you want to actually pause the execution and enter, enter an input. So it'll wait three seconds for that. You can actually ahead of time press enter and enter your enter your particular additional instructions. Uh, when we, if you do enter additional instructions, it will be added to the user task. So you'll take it into consideration. And after that, it will actually try to improve the code. So now let's go back to improve code and see what it was doing here. So it's going to actually run the code and get the, the terminal error. And as long as we haven't timed out and there's an error, we make a call to correct the error. The following code produced an error. Please fix it. We give it the initial code and the error. Please return full fixed code. So this is only if there's an error. If no error, then we ask AI to improve it. So in this case, we, we ask, please improve the following Python code for this particular user task. And if there was user input, remember, we had appended it to the user task. Make sure to think of all features and write as much code to cover as many features as possible. We just give it the iteration number. Then we grab the code and save it. And again, we grab the non-code text and save it as well and print the user. So that's pretty much what happens. And again, after that, we check if the user wants to intervene and get the user input. 
and follow the same thing. So if we scroll down here, we improve the code and I save the final code essentially and I print the usage. So it's pretty simple, but works really well. Here we are on iteration eight and we are up to 737 lines of code. Now let's run this again. Well, actually, we, let me change the uh, port number because I'm just going to, I'm running it in a separate terminal because this autocoder is actually trying to run it too and we can't have the same port number. That's why uh, we are running nine. Let's see what kind of improvements happened so far. Let's go and refresh the editor, choose a video file. Okay, so I actually had to run the eighth version because the ninth version was not working. Let's say five. Let's say overlay text, echo hive, and process video. Mm, okay, so it's still having issues. But this was the first time I'm trying. It's still working on it. We have one more iteration to go. But like I said, the code files for this will be available, including the open router version, which is exactly the same, except it doesn't print token usage. These new models are quite amazing. I highly recommend you to try. I'm so glad open router actually have it so that you, you don't have to be tier five to use it. Let's see what happens in the final iteration, and I will end this video. By the way, while we're waiting for the 10th, it is true that these models are so much more capable, and actually sometimes the O1 Mini does better than O1 Preview, so you may want to use both of it, and O1 Mini is actually five times cheaper, or O1 Preview is five times more expensive. Uh, but they're not perfect, so they're not going to give you a perfect answer every time. So if you have 750 lines of code, now let's run this and go to the URL, choose a file. Okay. Oh, wow. It updated the uh, uh, interface. That's nice. Let's say we trim it to the first five seconds. Let's enter overlay text. There's quite a lot of options here, but Let's process this video. Okay, still having an error while processing. I guess we could have intervened and tried to fix it. By the way, since we are in cursor, we can try to also fix it using Control K or Composer. The fact that it did this far is pretty impressive. I'm sure whatever error is happening, it's a bad request, maybe communicating with the backend, but this is a single file, full stack video editor using Daisy UI. It's pretty remarkable that this wasn't possible. I mean, obviously writing 700 lines of code in one go wasn't possible. Yeah, check it out. The code files along with the apps will be available. My Patreon links will be in the description. Thank you. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know in the last year and a half, I've spent 3000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.